What's up everybody, this is Steve Tubasolo the Hiker coming at you and this is my five things that you didn't know about me. I was tagged by my good friend Matt from Lead Me Outdoors. I'm going to go ahead and link his channel in the card above. Make sure you check him out. That guy's awesome. He does some amazing work. He does some amazing trail videos. One of the best dudes I know. I climbed Mount Whitney with a torn meniscus. Yep, believe it or not, I did. I actually climbed Mount Whitney with a torn meniscus. And if you actually watch the video, which I'll go ahead and I'll post in the, in the uh, card, if you actually watch the video, right after I passed Trail Crest, there's a clip of me taking a step down and you could actually hear me wince in pain. I actually literally say, ow, in the, uh, in the video. And um, yeah, believe it or not, I mean, I won't tell you the whole story. I'll maybe save it for another video. But essentially, while I was training, I torn my meniscus. And um, instead of calming down and relaxing and... Um, you know, trying to make sure that I got healthy, I continued to train and I think I ended up making it worse. Funny thing was, as I was climbing up to Mount Whitney, I didn't really notice anything, but I really felt the pain on the way down. And ultimately what ended up happening, um, you know, long story short, what ended up happening is I ended up having to get knee surgery and getting that torn piece of meniscus actually cut out. And um, yeah, it was something else, man. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, Things are kind of back to normal, interestingly enough, but still things aren't fully like they used to be. And uh, I think a lot of times, you know, I've often thought, rather, let me say, I've often thought that had I stopped training and just kind of called it and said, you know what, hey, I got injured here. I really should call this whole Whitney thing off. I went ahead and I kept pushing and I actually ultimately made things worse. I sometimes think that had I stopped training, I may have not had to have had surgery. I may not, you know, continue to injure that area. But, um, yeah, that's something that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, you know, probably my closest backpacking friends know. But a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of people that uh, subscribe to me have no clue that I actually climbed Mount Whitney with a torn meniscus. I'm more of an introvert than an extrovert. Now I know that doesn't sound terribly exciting, but the reality is, is that uh, I really am not very good with people. And it's kind of hilarious because you would think that somebody who has a YouTube channel would actually be an extrovert and actually uh, want to entertain. But I, many times when I'm on video or when I'm on camera, I am so full of anxiety. It's, it's just freakish. We'll just call it that. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely an introvert. Um, I have, like, a very core set of friends that I really like spending time with and meeting new people. Not that I won't do it, but meeting new people, I always feel awkward. I could definitely do it. It's not like it's a debilitating thing or something like that. But uh, <laughs> just today I was talking to, you know, some of my coworkers. We were just kind of laughing at some of the anxieties that I feel when I talk to people and, and meet new people and stuff like that. But that's something that probably a lot of people have no idea. You know, they, they see me on camera or they see me do these trail videos and stuff like that. I'm really so far out of my element most of the time that it's just, yeah, I don't know what, I'm, what on earth I'm doing with a YouTube channel. But uh, here we are. Steve the Introvert has a YouTube channel. Some of the responsibilities that I have at work include doing professional level video. So I always seem to have an interesting story with everything, but literally we were all sitting around at a table at work one day and um, I work for a school district and our superintendent wanted to kind of spruce up, spruce up our employee of the year ceremony and she wanted to include uh, video components of it. And I happen to be the nerd in the corner, kind of, you know, everyone knew that Steve was really good, uh, really good at programming his VCR. Uh, we'll just call it that. And um, they kind of said, hey, Steve, do you think you can maybe do some videos for this event? And I, you know, me always up for a challenge. I said, yeah, I, probably, I think I could figure that out. And um, yeah, it's literally how it started. Um, about seven-ish years ago, I want to say now, uh, I started producing videos for our Employee of the Year ceremony. And every single year, things have gotten better and better. Every single year, we've been able to get better and better gear. And it's really become uh, a fun project. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It is a stressful project, without a doubt. Um, this event is attended by a lot of people. And, um, you know, it's, it's the place where my primary source of income comes from. So I really don't want to mess any of this up. I want to do this to the best of my ability. So, 
yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely stressful, but it's allowed me to kind of hone in my skills and really kind of do um, something that's artistic and fun and digital, which, you know, certainly breaks up the monotony of working in a human resources department. But yeah, that's a lot. And that's one thing a lot of people have no idea that I actually do. I do professional video as a part of my duties working in a human resources department for a school district. I played two years of college level rugby at Cal State Fullerton. Yeah, believe it or not, when I got out of high school, um, a former high school football player, we won a CIF championship at my high school, my alma mater, Valley Christian High School in Cerritos, California. Um, yeah, from there, I never wanted to really play at a college level, play football uh, at a college level. I don't even think I maybe even had the, uh, possibly the talent to even play at that level, to be honest. Uh, I definitely played at my, in my high school, I was a two-way starter. Um, you know, one of the few people that started as a junior on varsity. And um, yeah, we played some pretty, pretty good teams and what have you, but I never had really any interest beyond high school playing football. You know, I didn't want to kind of spend my entire life, you know, possibly being injured further and, um, you know, doing that. I kind of, you know, wanted to close that chapter. But when I got into college, you know, I got walking through the uh, quad um, over there at Cal State Fullerton, you know, you have all these different clubs and the rugby club certainly interested me. I mean, you know, I thought, oh, wow, rugby, you know, this is a fun sport. And um, sure enough, great group of, great group of dudes. And um, yeah, I played a couple of years of college rugby. Um, what was really cool about it is I was in probably the best shape of my life ever. And uh, I'll go ahead and throw a picture up here that I have sitting on my desk that reminds me of better times. But I mean, if you look at that picture, yo, dude, I was jacked. Like, I was ready to move your piano, dude. Like, I, I pick up your piano, put it in my truck, uh, bring it to wherever you want it, unload it myself, and, like, place it exactly where you want it. I mean, dude, I was jacked. So those were, uh, <laughs> those were some pretty fun times playing college rugby for two years. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know that. I played college rugby for two years. I serve at my church quite a bit through music, video production, and live sound. Now, a lot of people don't know that about me. I am actually highly involved with my church, and I absolutely love it. Um, I'm sure a lot of people kind of realize, if you really kind of look at my videos, you can, uh, you can tell that, um, you know, that I probably go to church and what have you. But, um, yeah, I absolutely enjoy serving at my church. It's one of the best uh, things. It's um, ever since I was 14, I've been doing live sound. Um, gosh, I want to say for at least 10 years, I've been uh, leading worship um, at my church. And then also another thing that I've been doing too as of recent is actually video production. We do video announcements at church and they've, you know, kind of wanted to expand and, and do more multimedia during uh, the services. And I was able to help them out with that. So yeah, a lot of people don't know that about me that, you know, beyond the fact that I actually just go to church in general, I actually serve at church and it's one of the uh, greatest joys that I have. I love, I love working with the people of God. I love, you know, being at church. I thoroughly enjoy going to church on Sundays. Um, it sometimes cuts into my backpacking, uh, my backpacking career, but, um, no, I don't mind at all. I actually, uh, I actually look forward to Sundays and, uh, and uh, fellowshipping with those that I uh, go to church with. Well, that's it. That's the five things that you didn't know about me. Hopefully you found that interesting. And now it's time to tag some channels myself. Tag number one. I'm going to go with my buddy Mike Labrie, Strutter. You're up, bro. I want to know five things about you. And bro, I've seen your Facebook. There's some interesting things about you. That's for certain. And finally, tag number three. This is going to be another one of them unicorn tags. I'm going to tag Paul Messner. I don't know what's going on with that guy's channel, but he is blowing up. I uh, crossed the pond over there in England. I don't know what you guys got going on, but that last video he had, or at least the last one that I saw, where his tent, you know, had the possibility of being absolutely ripped apart by the wind. Yeah, that guy certainly seems like, uh, <laughs> like an interesting dude. I would love to know five things about him. Thanks again for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care.